Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I am just going to deal with the sheep here a minute. We're going to tidy them up and we're going to then go over and tidy up the cows. We're not going to need to actually put any food in for them today. They've got enough to last them. Remember this, if it fills up, it does last them for six days. So they've got plenty. The cows could do a little bit more. So we will see about putting some more stuff in for the cows. A straw for the cows, how are they doing? They're at halfway full on straw, so I'm not, going, I'm not too worried about the straw, but I will do some of the other. Um, now, this here is... I think this is actually a little bit of a problem. I don't think I want to be gathering up the food for the cows and then tipping it straight back in because they don't use the silage, do they? What we want to do is we want to scoop that up in a bucket and then we want to bring that down here. We want to tip it out so that it can be mixed into the feed mixer. The problem with that is that... Yeah, see, that goes in there. It's going to take a while to do that every day. So maybe we need to figure something else out. I mean, we could either just have a trailer up there that we dump the silage into or we do this another way. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't really given it a, a great deal of thought. Uh, but it's something that we want to seriously consider. We, we, we do want to seriously consider our options here for these cows. Um, I mean, for the most part, we don't need to worry about the cows very much at all. They are doing wonderfully. We've got 110 of them in here so far, and they've got enough food just sort of to be ticking over with. Our other animals are doing really well. And all we're really waiting on is tomorrow. We need, we need to wait on just a little bit of time to go by so that we can start harvesting the canola there and we can also get going with the mowing again up in the field up behind us and that one is going to be another hay harvest up there so we're going to need to do that all the way through with hay now it's just starting to rain so we are going to have to be careful that we don't get um she's not going to make any difference it's we, we don't have seasons it doesn't matter if anything gets soaking wet it makes zero difference whatsoever because that is the great thing with season. So we'll scoop that up there. We've got another 300 litres of silage that we're putting into the bucket right here. We'll bring that round. Everything else in the yard is mostly put away and tidied up. So we haven't really got anything else there that we want to worry about. We've got $14,000 at the moment, uh, which is... It's not really enough to go buying anything bigger. I was wondering whether we should seriously consider buying a bigger uh, set of mowers, like get rid of one of the mowers and buy some butterfly mowers so that we can do the mowing a little bit faster. I don't think we actually need to worry about that. I mean, I, I think how we're doing it at the moment is working out quite nicely. I don't think it's really any kind of a problem for us. Um... And the rate at which our cows are producing here. Um, we're going to need... We're doing one more lot of hay. But then I don't think we're going to need a lot more food for them after that. I think that we've got... Like with the silage and everything that we've already got down there. I think we're actually going to be alright. Because the main reason for getting more hay is that we've got those two... One and a half stacks over there. But remember the hay has also got to feed the sheep. So we... We need that to be able to keep these topped up and also to be able to top up the cows at the same time. So, yeah, it it is a little bit different when it comes to doing that. Now, hay and silage, 2,600. We'll keep an eye on that one and see whether or not they are actually using it up. I don't think they are because it says grass effectiveness 25%. So if you just have grass, you're 25%. If you just have hay silage, it's 75 And then just the total mixed ration is 100%. I don't think you need... Oh, some require straw. See, I, I don't know about that. I, I think you do need to put straw in for them in the base game in order for them to be able to do anything at all. I think if you don't put straw in for them, then they, they really don't like it. Um, but it's not like a, a major, major thing. I'm, I'm not really sure about that. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, 
Something that I did want to talk about, because I've seen a couple of comments about it um, here and there, was when I started this series, and it wasn't just this series, I was doing it in a few different series, and there our grain is ripe, so we are going to wait till tomorrow. Um, I was doing a weekly vote, and it, it, I, I know that it is something that uh, quite a few people did enjoy, they did like the weekly vote. Uh, unfortunately, I had to stop doing that because of the um, circumstances changed at home for me. Unfortunately, I do sometimes have to record a couple of weeks in advance. And being able to work the weekly question into it was no longer really feasible. So unfortunately, I did have to put a stop to that. And I do appreciate that some of you do actually miss that. Um, I still do look at feedback and I still read comments. If you, I mean, first and foremost, I would urge you to come along and join the Discord. Join our Discord because you can you can put comments and suggestions up on there. There are channels specifically for notifying me, getting my attention, putting ideas down so that I will see them. And it's, it's easy for me to come back and reference them later as well. Um, but... And also put suggestions for things that you want to see, things you want me to do, put them in the comment section. Always, always get those suggestions down. I'm always open to them. It's just unfortunate that I'm not actually able to do that weekly question anymore because of how circumstances changed for me at home. Um, otherwise, I would still be doing it because I realized that was quite a popular aspect of it. Um, a lot of people like that because it gave you control over the series. Um... And I have looked at ways that I could maybe bring it back a little bit, but I, I just cannot be consistent enough to be able to reliably do it. And that's that's why I don't do it, because sometimes I wouldn't be able to, sometimes I would be able to, um, and it's, it's completely inconsistent all the way through, and I really, really don't like that. Um, so that was why I got rid of it. I, I decided to stop doing it completely. Uh, figured it was probably better if I just completely stop doing it and then that would make it uh, a little bit easier across the board rather than um it being expected and it not turning up and and yeah well you, you you get the idea so that's why i unfortunately had to stop doing that weekly question but i do appreciate that some of you do miss it and if i am at some point in the future ever able to bring it back then i will see what i can do about that but uh, as things stand at the moment I would say that is quite unlikely that I will actually be able to bring that feature back. Um, and yes, I appreciate that that isn't quite what some of you want to hear. But uh, keep trying the other alternatives. Um, suggestions in the comments. I do try to shape the series as we progress going by comments in the comment section. I do my absolute best to try to shape things as we progress to that. And also comments that I receive over on Discord. Um, the only thing that I ask is you keep in mind that sometimes I am recording two, maybe even three weeks in advance. Uh, so you won't, you, you put the comments in, but you won't necessarily see my reaction to the comments or see any changes being brought about for two to three weeks. Usually, I'm working about a week in advance, but sometimes it can be longer than that. Um, it just depends on how things are happening for me at home, and that is the, the principal reason why I stopped doing the weekly question in the first place, because it's it's pretty much, it, it, it's basically guesswork. I, I am pretty much working on guesswork on that. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to leave that one right there, and we're going to just speed that up a little tiny bit faster so that we can get to bed buys time, which is about now, and then we will skip the night. So we want to go here, and we want to get our 11 hours of beauty sleep like that. Hopefully it will stop raining by the morning, and we can get, go. there we go, it has stopped raining. Hmm. Saying that it's going to be a cloudy day. We'll see. So it's 6.54. Let's go and see how much milk we've got. How much milk have we got? Right, or It tells us right here. 15,195 litres of milk. 32,000 is a full tanker. Which means 16,000 is our cutoff point. We're not selling today. We're still sell We're still going to be doing every other day, so we're not selling the milk today. 
We can we can skip forward to 7 a.m. so that we can make sure that we're on the right time. And it won't have made any difference at all. 15, 3, 6, 4. So we're, we're pretty close. The animals are, we are increasing the number of cows that we've got. But we're not quite there for being able to feed the, uh, to, to, to do it uh, on there, basically. To um, do everyday sales just yet. So it's it's every other day. So we're going to have to leave it today. And then we'll gather, we'll, we'll get the milk tomorrow. Uh, next up. We don't want to be selling anything. I mean, eggs. I suppose we could have a look. What's the what's what are the going rate for eggs at the moment? How are we doing with those? We're on two and a half thousand dollars for eggs. I think my grand scheme of sa saving all the eggs for the very end is is not such a, a bright idea. But um, you know what? We're going to do it now. We are. We, we're going to do. We're going to do it this morning. I'm not going to immediately do it. What I am going to do. Because the grass is going to take longer than anything else, the first job that we're going to do this morning is we're going to start... I've put it down to one time speed um, so that we've got it right for the mowers and for the um, combining, everything. It's, it's, it's all going to be right there, to red, ready to go. So I want to pick that one up. And I'm going to run all of this over to the workshop and we're going to make sure that the mowers are fully serviced greased up and ready to roll and then we're also going to pop round and get some fuel as well and then we're going to go straight into the grass field and we are going to head round and start doing our mowing we're going to mow all the way around the outside probably twice i'm thinking maybe twice uh, you're fully repaired. You could really do some repair work. And wow. That front one hasn't been repaired for quite some time. Okay, I'm quite glad that we did that. I haven't repaired that one for quite a while now. So then we'll go over this way and we will get a little bit of go-go juice into the tractor itself. And then we can jump into the field and actually start doing the mowing. Um... Let's go to there like that. There we go. How long have we got? Go, 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 go. There, $159. It's not too shabby. Apologies for that. Real life interrupted. Let's go over into the field. Now, in theory, what we should do is mow down the hill. Go over to the steep hill over here, and we should mow down the hill rather than mowing up the hill. It would be better all round. It would it would make it easier. You're not going to spin trying to get up the hill. It's not going to slow everything down horribly. And also going around the outside edges of the field. Uh which way do I want to be to go around? I, yeah, also going around the outside edge of the field. That's, a, that's going to work better for us as well, isn't it? Um, I want to go there and uh, there like that. Unfold that one and then start the mower at the back. And then I go and I start the mower at the front like that. And then if you do control Y like that, you bring it in. And then if I go like that, see, this is why I want to be going in this direction. Because then the mower will actually, when I go round the corner in a minute, the next corner, not this corner, um, when I go round the sharp corners in a minute, what it will actually do is it will put it, uh, it won't go missing that little strip by mowing this way round. And we've got the long mower sticking into the side of the field a little bit. And see, now this bit, I'm, I'm not really sure, you know, when you're just using one side mounted mower you do the outside round going this way but then you would gent you you turn your vehicle round and you go the other way when you've got a front mounted mower it doesn't matter so much which way round you're turning but if i go like that i'm not missing anything i'm not missing a line of grass when i'm busy running around the field which is what you do you do end up missing a line of grass when you go around the field if you're facing in the other direction um so I, I don't know when in real life you're doing your mowing around the outside edge of the field and you don't you if you're just using a side mounted mower if we didn't have the front one you would do the outside edge like this but what you would do is you'd go the other way round 
And you do your first cut around the field. You are uh, going in the other, opposite direction to this. And you would drive on the very outside edge of the field. And then when you've got right to the very end of the field, then you would go, you've done all the rest of it. Then you do the very outside round last. That would be the last bit that you would do. And then you would finish up and then that would be it and out you would go. Because you're more likely to hit something, a stone, a stick, um, hit the wall, any, anything. You're more likely to have an accident with the mower on that outside round. Which is why you do the rest of the field first. Um, and also, you drive all the way round. By the time you've done the rest of the field, the, the lines that you drove on with your mower, uh, with, with your tractor, sorry, they the grass will have started to lift up a little bit so it will have um you're not going to have so much sort of lying flat on the ground and not being cut and that also does affect it as well so i'm curious real farmers those of you who do actually have a front mounted mower and a side mounted mower like this how do you do it in real life do you go this way round when you're doing the outside round of the field despite having a front mounted mower or do you go the other way round the field and um, sort of do it the way that I've gone way out further there than I should have done really I've gone right off the edge of the field that we cut um, yeah which, which way do you go when you go around the very outside edge of the field do you go the way that you um I'm doing right here or do you go the other way round and put your front mounted mower on the outside edge get into the comment section and talk about that one let me know sorry about that um yeah get into the comment section and let me know about that I'm, I'm very curious I'm, I'd like to know how how you go about doing it what what is your way of mowing a field real life farmers those of you who use a front mounted mower on your tractor now I haven't actually gone to the bottom edge of my field here. I've done a very, very poor job of following the edge of my field here. We don't have it marked out with any fences or anything, so I've no idea where my field actually reaches. It's actually further down than this. That's me. we got quite the field here, really, and you can see right there I've gone and missed another little tiny bit, and there's another bit that I've missed down the bottom here. I have done an appalling job today. This, this is this is this is poor workmanship. This is this is poor mowermanship. That's what this is. It's poor mowermanship. We'll come along over here and bring you out like that. And then I'm going to go this way round now. And I'm so I'm going up the steep hill now. And this this is kind of why I originally said I was going to go the other way is so that I didn't have to go up the steep hill but I don't think this hill is all that steep I'm also not using the dual wheels although I think for doing the mowing we like the dual wheels are a little bit of an issue trying to do the mowing with that because they're wide enough that you're driving on the crop you're driving on the grass and I don't think that is a particularly good thing now what I've done over here have gone way down further than what I originally intended to do and that mower is picking up high enough off the crop that it's not mowing it which is a really good thing I'm, I'm quite pleased about that I was wondering if it was going to and then we'll get over to there so I was just wondering if it would be like worth going out a little bit further just to try and get that extra little scrape of grass all the way round at the moment, I'm not sure, because remember, it sort of classes as meadow grass out there. You don't get the fertilizer bonuses when you've got grass that's on unplowed land. Um, so I don't know if that's going to have been worth it or not. We will find out eventually. I think twice around the edge is not actually quite enough to be able to do this properly, or certainly not along the two turn, or at least the other end. The, the, the two edges where we turn, uh, the, uh, both of them actually, the two edges where we turn, I don't think two passes is enough. I think we need at least three. So I'm thinking maybe we'll just drive right round the entire field three times and then uh, that will just make sure that we've got it nice and simple and easy and there's no complications. And on our next time round, we'll go round the big rock and then we'll be able to set the hired help going in here and we can just leave it running. 
The combine this time is not going to be filling up all that quickly because we're doing canola, so it, it, it tends to fill up a little bit slower. Um, it means that we should be able to take a little bit of time to go and do some other work with the Deutsch track. At least this is what I was kind of hoping. If I could park the trailer somewhere in the field, then the combine we can unload into the trailer when we go past it. And then the rest of the time, the combine, I'm hoping, will be, you know, just to sort of carry on where it was. Now, we've got a little tiny spot of grass that was left behind there. We'll see what we can do with that in a minute. We may have to come back to it. And there's another little tiny spot right there. It's just because there's a rough patch in the field there. I think that's the, that's the main reason. Um, so it's, it's not like a, a major hardship thing. Are you picking up? Yeah, you are. You're picking up. Back round here. Go into there like that. And lower down. And then that one lowers down as well. And then we can run along here. So we've got to try and keep this bit as a clean and tidy line all along the bottom. And this is the slightly more difficult bit to get exactly right. So that it is ready for the hired help to come through. And do a neat and tidy finish, which is why I'm doing it like this. I'm trying to help the hired help so that we don't have a, a, a mess here when, when we need to come through in a bit. But I don't think I'm lined up where the hired help is going to be travelling anyway. Not quite. A third pass. A third pass is going to be needed. If we do a third pass, then we shouldn't have any issues. At least this is what I'm hoping. Don't really need to worry too much about the bit down the end, so we can just come round like that and then tuck into it on the bottom side there. Work our way up the hill. It's a steep old pull up here, but the tractor is able to do it at a reasonable rate. And that's that's pretty good. I mean it's it's it does slow down a little bit, but it, it doesn't slow down all that much. And now that we've gone and repaired our mowers properly. We are able to get the full speed out of the mowers, rather than just the part speed that we would have had the last time we were doing some mowing. I seem to remember it being a little bit slower than this last time. And that would have been because we hadn't properly serviced and repaired our mowers, which was my bad. I, I, I should have done that a little bit better, but never mind. Um, oh, steady. And on we go again. Let's lower them down. So we've done, we're now into the actual official field bit, so the extra bit that we've got down there, it's not going to be affected by hired help or anything like that. Um, it's just a question of setting the hired help going with the mowing, and then we're able to get going with that combining down the bottom as well. I'm going to bring this one out like that, so that I'm not sort of eating into the middle bit over here, and I'm then going to... I mean this side start that but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to lift that one up and lift up the back mower and then I'm going to stop the front mower the back mower I think you can travel fine over the grass without cutting it but the front one quite often does cut the grass as well while you're traveling along with it up so that's why I stopped it and then we go like that and then we lower them down nicely done now, I can go tight to the edge of the stone here. We'll do three times around the stone. Keeping in tight, like this. And then we can come out. So I'm going to bring it out one extra mower's width on the side. And it's only the front and the back that I really want to extend it out further than that. So I'm sort of bring it out like this and then around over like this and then that bit sort of comes in there and then I go out for the third pass over this side like that uh, this one's gonna need to go over and around a little bit further there so it's sort of like that that's that's roughly where I wanted to go I think and then out here a little bit as well bring that out there a bit oops uh, raise them both up like that right I think that should be enough that I can the tractor with the hired help will turn properly 
when he's coming around that corner, when he's um, coming up to the big stone there. So long as it will, that's that's all we're really aiming to do right there, is, is just get that bit so that the hired help can work on it properly. And then we can go back into this bit over here, and we've got just up here and then down the side of the field, along the bottom, and we've done three passes all the way around the edge. That should, I'm hoping, be enough to allow us to then just leave it to carry on without any problems. Um, is a small, small chat. We, we got this a couple little bits down the end here, so there may be a couple of odd little patches that are left just on this end. It seems to be this end that we have more problems with, and there's partly, I think, down to where those trees are, but whether we've got an invisible stump somewhere on the very end of the row over here i don't really know there might be there might not be I, I i'm not sure i know that it does sort of have the odd bit of a problem with turning but what i was thinking of doing here just to make sure that we've got everything is run all the way down here on this third pass and then we will just lift up actually i'm going to lift up right here like that and I'm going to spin back over here. And then I'm just going to lower the front one down going in this wise direction. And I've taken that bit. I just want to go up here and get that little patch right there. There's two patches that I want to get. Is this, this one here. Yeah, like that. It's coming at that at a slight angle. And that one going in the other way anyway lift you up and then if we go racing off back down here there was a tiny little bit that i left there we should now be able to get like that and then i can line it back up here so if i do control v that will then lower both of them down and i can do that bit right there and we've done three passes on this end. We just want to do one more pass along the bottom. And this one, I want to... I'm actually thinking if I can put the hired help going from this bit right here. Like, if I line it up there, press H there so that we get the hired help. And I'll see where that goes. In a, that's where the straight line is. Now, the problem I have with the hired help with these mowers is that it always goes too far back. Like, if I press H on here... Oh, no, he's actually lowered now and, and gone into the right place. But there, he, he drifted forward just a tiny bit too far, just to start with. And that is that ended up causing us a slight problem. Now, he's going to go to there. He's going to keep that in a straight line, and he's gone on further. But is he going to be able to get all the way past the end of our fence line all the way along there? Or is he going to stop and try and turn round? I got a sneaky suspicion he's going to stop and he's going to give up and he's not going to like it. Right. He's going to give up and he's not going to like it. So I'm going to go on from here. Now I'm keeping that in a pretty much dead straight line. Over to there. So I'm going to go to this point. Right here. And then I'm going to press H again. And I'm going to let the hired help just do this bit. It's going to go over there. And that's going to give us a straight cut along that bit. Now, I'm going to turn that off again. And then I'm going to do this bit down here myself. And then I'll set the hired help going again. Just doing lining up from where we've done it just there. And that, I'm hoping. So I want to start you. And then I want to oops, uh, start you. And then we want to lower them down like that. And in he goes. So I've just got two passes on here. Pick that one there, and then we can spin this one round. Like that. And then go back in over here. And that's that bit taken care of. Right, so we've done the mowing. We've got that bit, sort of, well, all of the outside bits. We've done all the manual bits on the mowing that we need to do for now. And the hired help should be able to go and do the rest of this field without any real problems. So if I bring you over to about that point, I think, and we set you going there, there is a little bit of overlap just on there for a minute, but I don't think that's going to affect anything. I just want to make sure that it gets started and it is able to travel all the way across because if it's not, which it's not, I can already see that that is going to be 
lining up wrong, so I actually want to bring you down quite a step from there, despite where I had it previously. It must have drifted down the hill quite a bit when I was coming through last time. Right, let's try there then, shall we? Looking at that over, it, like, where, where the mower is going to meet up. This is why we watch it. This is why we just make sure that it is lining up correctly. Is it going to do it? It's still, how much out is it? This, that is ridiculous. Seriously, how far out was it to start with? It's gone and left a great big chunk there. Right, I'm, I'm going to bring it over our whole mower's width. Help it eat. No, you haven't completed anything at all. If you tell me that again, you'll be out on your ear, sunshine. We're not putting up with that nonsense. Not, not, not interested. Absolutely not interested. Right, you carry on over there and you do what you've got to do. And we can head over this side. That's going to be our next task, is to get this one fired up and out and running. So we're going to bring you out. And I'm going to... You know, it'd be helpful if I lifted this one up. I'm going to run this one over to the workshop. We're going to go over it with the grease gun. Just make sure that everything is greased up and ready to go. And then we can put it out into the field. And we will be able to start harvesting at the beginning of our next episode. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Go on, I'll let you see. If, if we, we need to repair that one. And that one's already repaired. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.